At this point, I'm live. Uh, another way that we can try to be open to our public to let them know what's going on in terms of uh, school business. So this meeting here is streaming live as well as the board meeting tonight. So uh, again, welcome. And I guess if you want to, I, I just let you, uh, Madam Chair, they'll go raise their hands and you recognize them. And when you rise to speak, just state your name and uh, then go. Is that Yes. Okay. I got a question on that. <clears throat> the school loan gets 59% of the tax. Right? The school board gets 59% of the low, 59%. Can every name add it together to get it together? And can we get a little better? students go to Madison County we pay nothing for our students to go to Madison County to a state operating facility I understand that. that facility was built by the Madison County school system so we pay no money to attend the Madison County uh, area technology center I, 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 I'm, I, 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 I'm in the city Madison County is so little different than this county so what what we call it we're, we're uh, Falcon, and you want to take kids to Falcon. <coughs> Come over here and I call for ten. It's in the paper, then. What you're saying is it's in the paper. <coughs> um, yeah, we're not asking for Powell County to pay anything for that facility uh, because I can tell you in my former school district, the Bell County School System built the Area Technology Center with no funds from Middlesboro or Pineville, and those students attend that building free of cost. The Bell County School System does receive money from the state for those kids that attend. And we talked about that at our special call meeting when we approved the Career and Technical Grant. We'll receive about $100,000 for Powell County students attending the Area Technology Center if it is completed in Essel County. But the Powell County school system itself will not pay anything for that facility and they would, any money that they would send to that facility would be left up to them. 
in their discussions with the principal because the facility would belong to the school system the operation of that facility and all expenses to operate that facility will be paid by the state as it's operated as an area technology. Let me ask you this. Are you useful to be honest and truth? Always. Always. Are you going to are you leave the Delta County and go to the Pat County and two years ago? Desire to be the county. Why, why, why they said, why they said over there, you, the, the word's going around. Look, I got a lot of friends in the Uh They said they do come to the Bell County. That's fine. I wouldn't tell you to go back to Bell County. Because you just go to nothing, nothing down there as you come down there to do. So they come to the race, that. decides not to renew my contract at the end of two okay. years, I will do everything I can to support the kids of this school district I have. I did not raise taxes when I got here. I think I'm on record as saying that I would not recommend a tax increase. This is totally up to the people of Essel County, whether or not they want to support the kids of this school system. We have facilities that need work. We do not have the money to do that work. And that's bottom line. It doesn't matter to me. I can tell you this. I will work hard every day for the next two years to do what's best for the kids. And, you know, if you want to attack me personally, that's fine. This has nothing to do with me personally. This has nothing to do with attacking me. Uh, I can go to bed every night. I, my record is clear. My record has been clear. There's been more transparency in this school district since I arrived and there's been in a long time. And I will continue to do that. Here's tonight is a prime example of us streaming this board meeting so people that can't be here can hear what's going on in this board meeting. That wasn't even possible before. When I got here, the public wasn't even allowed to comment at a board meeting. Well, let me answer this. You've been out of politics for this, for, uh, for uh, over two months. The vehicle? Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, well uh, <coughs> according to you, uh, to the KLS in Kentucky, you're not supposed to get out in politics unless it's really official. I, I, can, I can ask for the support of our people for our kids. Yes, sir, I can. I'm not dealing with a political campaign. This is not a political campaign. A very gentleman told me different. And everything here was run by the same way that I, 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 all, these, all these things up here were running for both boards. Your information's wrong. Well, you just had me to the it Your information's wrong. I can get out here and sell the recall of the nickel as much as I want to. So I'm board, asking the people to support the bid. Before it's bid. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm asking for the people to support the tax increase for the kids of this community. Exactly. Yes. I tell you what, you got people in the back running this board meeting, and I do not appreciate that. You all are employees. What do you mean, brother? They're sitting here hitting their watch on time. That is disrespectful to people. John, and what's I, disrespectful is for me to be personally attacked. I'll tell you what, here you go, newspapers. We were told, <clears throat> it's in there, how to manipulate the people in your community to get the nickel passed. It's all right there. You were, all of us was in that meeting. Every single one of us. It says what month to run it, how to, <clears throat> let me look here. Oh, if we don't have the blood for a be negative, be positive. Board members are not allowed to uh, voice their opinion if they're against it. And this was all paid by the taxpayers on behalf of the Kentucky School Board Association. 
Now, <clears throat> I don't want to commit fraud. And we are doing this by what we were told to do, which to me is frauding the taxpayers of this community. And I will not stand behind that. How can you defraud the taxpayers when you give them every bit of information that they need? I've told them how they form a petition. I've told them the timeline. All right, it says the best way is to never do it in August. It says December is good, and the man sat right there and stated that you want to do it in December because everybody would be on Christmas break. That if it went to a vote, that was the best time to vote for it. Then the next one was June, which is what this is doing. And then it also says to special events, like getting money for a technical center. Biggest part that got them at this last technical center is running the nickel. Johnson County got the or just the same time we did on the 17th of May, that they got approved for the same amount of money, or, about, or the money, they went to election that next Tuesday. I'm saying that all the way to the top, this is crooked and corrupted, and I will not back it. And you don't have to back it, John. And I don't back you. I understand that. Because I think it's just dirty. I don't see how it's dirty when you put the information out there to the public, you've advertised it, you put the information out there, that's your opinion. Guys, I'm here to do what's best for you kids. It doesn't matter to me. It also said, oh, if you look on the Kentucky web pages, that they tell the superintendents to go get to basically your dumbest people to put articles in the paper. It also tells that you constantly use in the name of the kids. You hadn't ever used the name of the kids until the last board meeting, and you quoted 2,398 different times. That's how many kids we have. But never didn't know that before. You should have known, John. You're a board member. <coughs> You never said that before. All we've always had between 22 and 23. All we've actually had 24 to 25. We're losing population. I'm not oh, here my. to argue, guys. We're just here to, you can speak your support for the nickel. You know, uh, attack me personally, that's fine. I go to bed every night and I never lose a bit of sleep over it. I won't lose any sleep tonight. And I honor your ability to be able to sit here and say that you're not for it. I respect you for that. And uh, I, I'll tell you this, it will be false. Okay. Uh, uh, I gotta agree with you. I want to turn this tonight, but I wait till next week and turn it in. I wait until my the board meeting before I do it. Uh, <coughs> you hear more from me. So let's go. Okay. Now I'd like to say I'm for the nickel if it was going for the right thing. I don't think adding Estill Springs, adding on there in a floodplain, is the right thing. I think we got an architect that we're paying to make himself jobs. Because we've had the same one. They said we needed South Irvine to be done. We went done South Irvine. Now we're going to close South Irvine, move them all to Estill Springs. It's just a constant little fixes here, but we're been out millions and millions of dollars over the last few years. We need a plan, not just by the moment of whatever that architect wants to draw up. You're going to redo the, the driveways and, and everything at Estill Springs. Less than 10 years ago, we spent a million dollars there. And here we're going to tear it up again. It's just, it's bad planning. I'd be for a nickel if it was going for the right thing. And we appreciate your comments, but this is a public hearing, so I'd like to move on if there's anybody else that would like to comment. And thank you, sir, for your comments. Susan. Hi, I'm Susie Sterling, um, I'm representing um, myself, but I just wanted to say that I'm in favor of the nickel tax. I think that this will help support our, the future for our students. I think when um, you look at what opportunities are available with the Technology Center, it can provide us with uh, background and you know, a good foundation for the students so that they can go into a healthcare profession. In the future, there's going to be shortages of health care. There are good jobs.
jobs in health care, and I think our students deserve the opportunity to have access to good jobs, but they do need a foundation, and it starts in high school. They have to have a good foundation where the Technology Center can provide that. With the IT component of it, that will help us with the electronic health record. Everything is going to be electronic in the future. It is already, so we need students that can come out and work for a hospital and help them with their electronic Thanks. health record and with doctor's offices and any of the um, healthcare profession, there's going to be a need and I think that that school will help meet the future needs of, of our community and they'll keep kids, they'll come, we have health jobs <coughs> here, it'll bring our kids um, back to our community, which is what we want. We want people to work in Estill County in the hospital. There's a lot of positions open in physician offices. So I just think it's a good thing. I support it, and I think that that will um, be great for our future, for our students in our community. Thank you. Yes, sir. Tom Hart. Um, some over 200 years ago, we decided as a nation that we were going to support universal public education. among us would pick up the tab and the most good was the property owner um, and, and therefore the property owners were assessed based on the amount of property they had and it's still the same today the most affluent among us is property owners some of us don't own much property some of us own more property i happen to own a bigger piece than some taxes are more than a lot of people's are. But I support this next tax. <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, we, uh, I don't have any kids in the school system, but I have kids that work for me. And I care a lot about those kids. And I think it's important to us that we give them the best education we can afford. The nickel tax, it's not going to push us. We're going to get a 4% tax anyhow. Now, hang on. We stretch just a little bit, just a little bit, and go that one more percent. We'll triple the money we get because the state's going to match it two dollars for every dollar. I don't see this as a hard decision to make that little stretch to give us the opportunity to make improvements in our schools, in school buildings, and to build a technology center. I think building technology center is one of the greatest things we could do for the future of this county and giving our kids an opportunity to learn building trades, to learn trades like healthcare, welding, electricity, information technology. Our kids today, as you said, we got a decline in student population. It's gone down 10% just the last few years. It's because there's no opportunities here. The young people leave. And if the young people leave, we don't have kids. And they leave because there's no job opportunities here. And I know people in this county right now today that could employ welders, could employ auto mechanics, could employ electricians. They can't find kids that are capable. They <coughs> don't have the education. And what kids we do have that go off to technology centers Madison County, you spend this day, you'll get a couple hours with the academic instruction. Why don't we do that here? Grow our kids so they can stay here with a job. And I think it's, uh, like I said, we're stretching ourselves just a little bit more for that nickel tax. It's certainly in the best interest of this county, it's in the best interest of our kids. In the best interest of our economy. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I just want to go on the record too as saying I'm for it. And um, I'm for it because I don't think we can afford not to. I think a 
lot of employers look at the school system. They look at the feeders of what their, um, whatever their occupation is. Can the school system, can the community feed my employment? I understand we're not. It's up to the board, whether it's a comp rate, if it's 4%, if it's a tax decrease, I understand that. I also know for, I think, eight years, <clears throat> forgive me if I'm wrong on the numbers, we've taken a comp compensatory rate and lost quite a bit of money because of that. You get to a point where if you lose too much, the state comes in. And that almost occurred here about 20 years ago that the state was going to take over because there wasn't enough contingency to do it. <coughs> And any time I can get 10 cents for a nickel, I'll take it all day. Um, the other thing I just want to say, <clears throat> and please correct me if I'm wrong, but regardless, the special election, if you have it, it's going to cost $20,000. I think it is only fair to put the, to spend that money for the election and let the people of Estill County decide how they want to do it. If the nickel's not being spent appropriately. I got faith in the board up there to make sure the money is spent appropriately. But I don't think we can afford not to take the nickel tax. Can I say something, Mayor Pena? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I was mayor of the city of Irvin one time. I had a taxi agreed to come here. It don't matter what our kids think about it, it's still working. The banks and everything here can show where anything will be good or not. We, I done asked for bond money, and they agreed to pay it. The state agreed to put the rules in. We had everything set up. We were going to drill the, drill, drill the ground to put the track on. They, we had the whole thing set up, everything was okay, and that guy come over here and said, what's coming to that in it? Because the banks here wouldn't $280,000 in bond. It don't know what you have here, if, if they got some changes in the financial system here, they'll never be in here. I don't care what you do for your kids. And, and there's more than, than Eleven and a half percent than five and five five percent. Anybody in the world can figure eleven percent and five percent. And to sit and say that there's not but a little uh, difference in it, that's wrong. Dead wrong. a little bit confused when I read the paper last week and then when the comment was just made again on uh, if the nickel didn't pass that it, we would definitely get a 4% increase. If it goes to election, that is correct. Uh, automatically it defaults back to the 4% increase for that year. So then the is, following is 4 year. 4% like a comp rate or? 4% is, is the max rate that a board can take without uh, public recall. So anything that's above what the board have to vote on that though before it could be said well yes. if it goes to election the board has basically voted on it they understand that if they decide to go through you. with an election that's what's illegal then it is a four percent increase for that school year then they can come back the following year and do whatever they want to whether they <coughs> go compensatory rate or they go four percent this year for example we kept the same tax rate that we had the previous year, which was above the compensating rate, we had yeah, to have a tax here. I understand that. I just yeah. didn't understand that if, if you force it to election, then you're agreeing that if you don't win the election, you're going to take the max rate. Is that correct? That's right. If it goes to election, the board does understand that it does become the max rate for that school year. And yes. we cannot control that, can we? No. If it goes to election, it's state that we have to take the 4%. Okay. But now, as of right now, For that's not year. been voted on, so we can't say 
like it's been coming out in the papers that it's going to be 4%. The board would have to agree to have an election. If there's a petition and we don't, ha we choose not to take it to the election, then there is. Then you would set your own rate. We, we would set, set your own, own rate again yes. in August. That is correct. Sorry, uh, LW. No, I I, no, you're me. fine. Yeah. I just got to talk about it. Right. 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 Uh, well, not only me, it confused a lot of people. Uh, and so you'll know that 4% 4 4 increase is about 1.9 1. 1. cents. I've got a visual television. I gotta go. I got people coming to see me. Thank you, sir. Anything else? Let me, if you don't care, I will address one thing. We talked about an architect. Um, before you would even start this project, this board would need to hire an architect for this project. We don't currently have an architect for this project. 
we have an architect that's been in this school system for a long time, but before you would actually move forward, uh, it just doesn't default to the architect that you currently have. That will be a decision that you all will need to make uh, because we would need to take proposals for architectural services. You have to sign a contract with that architect for this particular project. So you're not bound to the current architect that has done the last two projects. That will be a vote made by you all to determine after you've received proposals whether or not you want to continue. And there's pros and cons to that. And um, I know that uh, our current architect is asked to start some work with the Career Tech facility and I've told them no uh, because that's one thing that uh, we need to discuss. We discussed at the last board meeting if you remember that we need to decide if we want a new architect. As far as your facility plan is concerned, um, your facility plan is something you all have control over as well. Um, you don't have to do any project that's listed on that facility plan. I think right now the Essel Springs part of it, uh, we did do a finding on that with board approval. Uh, that change that was made to the district facility plan was made by the previous board. I believe we did, or we did it right in the middle of the change of boards. And at that time, Estill Springs was uh, <coughs> looked at as a possible place that you can do an addition. Just because your facility plan says that you can do an addition there doesn't mean you all want to. And there does need to be some uh, things looked at because just recently, Mr. Ballard and I have discovered that actually Estill Springs, for whatever reason, is located in a floodplain based on historical records. And we don't know why it's listed, because there's really not been a flood there in a long, long time. But that in itself raises concerns about whether or not you would do any additional work at Estill Springs. But I would say this, you're gonna have to do $3 million worth of work at Estill Springs because you're gonna have to complete the heat and air system there and bring that facility up to current upgrades that needs to be made. Um, South Irvin is a perfectly fine facility now that we've moved kindergarten out of there. That facility meets the needs of our preschool. And because there's a new roof on that building, <coughs> it could meet the needs of our preschool for the next 20 years, long after we're no longer affiliated with the school system. And that's a decision you all make as a board right now. The career tech facility is a real need. Um, you know, we, we know what's about the career tech facility. We know that the needs and the upgrades that's needed at the middle and high school. But none of those things are laid in stone at this point in time. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think that probably two years from now, you'll have to develop a new facility plan. Um, so those things are always fluid. They come about every four years. And I believe we're in the second year. Is that right, Mr. Ballard? of the current facility plan. Uh, so you, you have total control over that. If you don't want to build an addition at Estill Springs at this time, you don't have to do that. We're perfectly fine at South Urban, but we need about $4 million to complete the Career Tech facility, as you all know, based on the numbers that we got. We need about $3 million to bring Estill Springs up to current uh, code and current needs for our kids. Uh, you're going to need a new roof at the middle school. You need to address traffic issues out there. Uh, we have a lot of people in this community that want to address athletic facilities. I, I even made some people mad at me at the April meeting because I said athletic facilities would be my last priority. But now I, I had people ready to donate money and you wouldn't even speak to them. I told you three different times. I, and I told you, John, I, I don't remember that. And the last be, time I told you, we was in the ballroom at the golf house. I said, get a list. They're ready to write checks. And, I and mean, we can already have a new football field and baseball field and everything done. Well, if those people were willing to donate then, if they're willing to donate now, if they want to come to my office, I'm, I'm here. Uh, right now, today, I'm working like my 241st day this year on a 240-day contract. So I'm here, 
uh, quite a bit. I'm, I'm available at all times. I'm more than willing to do that. Um, but I don't think, you know, and for those athletic facilities, that's fine. If, if people wanted to donate, we still have to follow the same rules that we would follow with KD in terms of having an architect and all those things. And that would be money the school system wouldn't have to spend. Um, but overall, this school district has somewhere in the neighborhood of $30 million worth of facility needs. The recallable nickel is its own record and out there for everybody is right at $17 million. Um, so regardless of um, how much money that might be donated for athletic facilities, and that would be good. That would just allow us to do more things. If that's out there and that's a possibility, then that would allow us to address some of the other issues that we need to address. Because if we're going to stay in South Urban, uh, we, we may want to consider putting new windows in South Urban. You've done work over, if we're going to stay there 10 or 12 years and that's your wish, you may want to consider doing that. That's up to you all. But I just want everybody to know that the architect is something that's not even been decided on yet. And just because you've had somebody for 10, 12 years doesn't mean they get to continue. That's your all's decision. And it's your all's decision as to what construction projects that we do if the nickel does pass. So I just want everybody to, to realize that. Any other public comment? Sir. Chris Harris, on what you just spoke on there, kind of brought up something I had to, I was always told that in 2011, when they reissued the floodplain in Essex County, that I know the house right beside Essex Springs went in the floodplain and assumed Essex Springs did. So at your last courthouse meeting, when you brought up the addition, potential addition at Essex Springs, I had inquired farther about it and had been looked into it. Uh, and I'm glad. So uh, on that same issue, you had also inquired about geothermal at Espo Springs. Mm -hmm. I have been told, and I haven't researched, but it might be something you want to inquire about, just as the floodplain, that you have to own mineral rights in order to drill vertical and put geothermal in. That would be something we would have to check so, on, and yeah, and I really don't know if that's the case, and if it is, then yeah. there could be issues and then, there. Yeah, and that's we just need to check on it. You yeah. it, and I thought about it, and I wanted to tell you. And it's something, told, Mr. Ballard, if you would make a note of, it would be something we would need to check. And the only other thing I got to say is, is I do admire each and every one of you board members. I think we have a very educated, well-rounded uh, board, and I appreciate what you do. It's, uh, I know it's not always an easy thing. <laughs> and we all have different views and issues. But uh, I've known most of you all my life. Miss Nisa, I'm sorry I don't know you better than I do, but uh, uh, you, uh, you all, like I said, you were raised very similar to me. Uh, and I trust in your values and your judgment. And I, I wouldn't put myself where you're at, so <laughs> <laughs> I admire what you do. It's, uh, it's not always an easy thing. And, uh, you know, we're all going to have different opinions. Uh, and you have to stick to your roots. And each of you are very vested in our community. And uh, so that's, you know, all I can ask is that you do that. And, and I feel like you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I'll speak one more time since, uh, <laughs> since the potential of all this money is coming in. I, I am as strong for education as anybody in this room. I put a lot of my own money and own time <coughs> into it every day. It's a part of conversation in my household every minute of every hour almost. Well, maybe not every minute, but it's, it's discussed until we go to bed every night. It's discussed the first thing when we get up every morning. Uh, and we put a lot of our own money and own time into it. So I ask that the emphasis be on the education, and that will make them proud from now on. 
not the facility that they're in. Uh, that's something that they can take with them when they leave that facility. Whether it's you know a shack with a dirt floor or a ten million dollar building, that lasts a lifetime. And you're right. That it, it is a twofold situation here. I am uh, this board and myself and our staff. We're uh, very much aware that uh, you can't just put lipstick on yeah. a pig and make it. That's right. Pretty good. <laughs> we we have got we have got to do a better job educating our kids, and we have put a lot of effort into that. The two years that I've been here, I I honestly believe you will start seeing the results of those labors, and you're you're going to see turnarounds in our schools, um, and. Um, you know, if not, I asked this board when I was hired, you give me three years, and if I've not done the job that I've told you that I will do, I will more than gladly leave. They won't have to worry about renewing my contract at the end of my fourth year, I will leave. And I will thank this community for the opportunity. I'm, I'm, I'm indebted to this community. They gave me an opportunity that uh, I hadn't been given before. And that's why I want to be able to put forth all the effort that I can. And education is our number one priority. Facilities would be second, I mean, to provide the facilities that we need. Uh, the one thing that you did mention that goes along with education on the one facility that goes along with that is this Career and Tech Center. I do believe it will be huge for our kids. And if other kids are allowed to come there based on the fact that it's state operated, um, it only helps our entire community if kids from Powell and Lee and Wolf and wherever they're at in Eastern Kentucky, if we can do anything for those kids, um, we're, we're doing this entire community a service. And uh, the bottom line is they all have facilities. We don't. So we have to try to make some compromises in order for us to have that facility. And that's what we did. Uh, we went out and we sought. Uh, we sought a partnership with Powell County. And uh, because I can tell you right now, you wouldn't have $5.7 million. If Powell County had said no, you would not have the money. Plain and simple. We didn't get it the first time. There was no reason to believe we were going to get it the second time. Because we had an Estill County focus only. And we looked at only our kids and we were turned down. And I was told directly from Secretary Heiner's mouth, and I don't think if he was here, he would tell you the same thing. If we didn't try to form a partnership that looked at a regional focus on how we could help not just our kids, but help this entire region, then we were not going to be in the money. And that's what we did. And that's the one facility, and you're exact, that's the one facility I believe that does impact education. But you're, you're right on the track. Education and the education of our students comes first. And if we don't start doing a better job there, we can have mansions on the hill. And we're not going to draw people here. We're not going to draw business here. Uh, so I agree with you wholeheartedly. It's a good point. Got about 10 minutes. If everybody leaves here, all hearts and minds are clear. I used to hear that all the time in church. Yes, sir. One question, and, and it's, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but I, want, I would like clarification. If the board decides to approve the nickel tax, the only people this affects our property owners. Correct. Correct. Okay. okay. Whether it's real or tangible. Right. It only affects property owners. Okay. And I would add to that, Robbie, just for just for putting everything out there and open, I'm sure that if somebody has rental property and their taxes go up, they could choose to decide to pass that on to their renters. It may impact 
cost of services for somebody because if they've got a fleet of trucks and they have to pay more taxes for those fleet of trucks, they could pass that extra cost on to them. So yes, on the front, and that's why I, I want everybody, I, I've been, I didn't try to pass this under the darkness of December. I, I think that's- You done it under June. Deplorable. Well, I did it in June because of when the tax bills come out. Because we would have had to put out two tax bills and our public would have had to do it then. But that's why I went out and you sold it. You done it while there was summer vacation and nobody in the school system. Well, that's what we were told. You were sitting in that meeting with all the rest of us. I understand that, but also this is this is all during this month. We I went out there and I told everybody, if you want to form a petition after tonight, it's time to form a petition. We'll run an ad in the paper on Thursday. This coming Thursday, there'll be an ad in the paper that directs anybody that wants to start a petition to see our clerk and you've got a 45-day window starting tonight that's to do that. That's pending if it passes tonight. Right? That's pending if the board passes it tonight. So has that decision already been made? No, I'm just saying if there, it that, been a legal board. you all got to take happen. a vote tonight. That's the third item on the agenda tonight. you got to take a vote. And if you choose not to, then we put it to rest and that's it. Now, I don't know your all's hearts and minds. I've not polled you. That is illegal. You, yeah. I've not polled you. I've not yeah. asked any of you how you're going to vote. So um, the bottom line is is that um, the election was set up to be sometime in September in order for us to be able to meet the tax bill for the fall. And if we'd have done this in the tax year, it wouldn't have cost us anything if we'd have put it to an election. I mean, uh, election year. Election year. Yeah, that would be true. That could have saved us a lot of money that could have went to the kids. It would have saved us about twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars. Kids are first. We had budgeted. And you all are in control of the budget. You all approved that budget in May. Yes, ma'am. So a question if you don't approve it, if it doesn't get approved or if it doesn't pass. Do we lose that? Is that money going to a, a different county, a different community? Will the state take that money allocation of that money back? Uh, in terms of the match, the match will be, it will be, for, are you talking about the $5.7 million for yeah. the tech center? Yeah. Uh, no, because this board committed to come up with that money one way or the other. Okay. Uh, unless they have another vote not to do that. Because right now we have committed our entire bonding potential, all $3.7 million of that facility. So in order to build that facility right now, we would have to have the 5.7 million, the 3.7 that is every penny that we have down to their last red cent. And that also means that the physical court would have to come through with their million dollars of services and materials in order for that facility to be built. Yes, sir. And a similar question. And if for some reason tonight they decided, well, can we postpone this? Can the nickel be voted like in an election year, the next election? Yeah, they can do it again. So it's not I one, mean, it's not a one time thing. It's not a one time thing. No, as a matter of fact, uh, Tribble County, I believe, just recently had their second election. They've had their second election uh, for the nickel and was defeated again at the polls. And I will tell you this, I do believe the best time to have an election is when there is not a countywide race. Really? Yes, I do, because then I believe that you get people that are passionate about, they're either passionate about not paying the extra tax or they're passionate about improving facilities. And whenever you have elections like for clerk or jailer or whatever they may be, sheriff, you have people that automatically go in that poll and they don't they don't necessarily i mean nine times out of ten you go in an election booth and i will tell you this i do believe it's the best time if we ever want it to pass if it goes to election it's now because most people are going to vote against the tax increase 
whenever it comes up, it's the only item on the ballot. You walk in there, yes, I support facilities in these schools, or no, I do not support a tax increase. And I've made it clear. I, I don't begrudge anybody that feels like that they don't support a tax increase. They should walk in there and vote no. I've, I've made it clear. I don't want anybody to feel like, if anybody has said that I have said that you don't support our kids if you don't vote yes, they're lying to you. I've never said that. Well, I, I would yeah. just think the board would want the largest percentage of their population and the people that put them in their opinion rather than just a select opinion. Would be, that was my only question. I think that uh, there's been schools that's been successful at both. It's just a matter of what the community and it really feels. Way, and it yeah, could. yeah, it really could. It takes 555 signatures to force an election. I've told everybody that it's open record. Um, so it takes 555 signatures to force an election. They can be in the courthouse tomorrow to start a petition if they want to. I'm just talking about. Yeah. During a normal election, yeah. you're going to have a bigger turnout, so you're going to get a re better representation of your community than during a special election. Yeah, there's two trains of thought there. That is one train of thought. The other one is to do it when it's the only thing on the ballot. So it's just, I guess, it's a philosophy that we could argue. Flip a coin. Yeah, you flip a coin. Yeah. We want everybody to make sure, sure that you've had an opportunity. I won't speak for our chair or our board members, and I'll allow them if they've got anything they want to say, but I, I appreciate the turnout here tonight. I appreciate your comments. Um, we, um, uh, the board will take that in an advisement. Uh, I'll make no secret my recommendation to be to the board that we will pass the tax. They'll, they'll have the right to vote on that here probably in the next 10 minutes after probably by seven after 10 you'll know if you want to stick around to see what they do uh so um 10 after seven don't put us here just yeah, tonight. what did i say 10 after 10 you said 10 after 10 10 after seven yes uh, well, but, uh, yeah. thank you all for coming and you can adjourn yes i appreciate everybody being here and appreciate everybody's comments and we'd appreciate if you'd like to stay for the board meeting. Thank you all.